What's up everyone? Um, this week for our YouTube video, we want to do something a little bit different. Uh, we've kind of shied away from doing product reviews and gear reviews on our YouTube channel so far since we started it uh, because so many people out there, so many gun tubers already do reviews. And we want to try to focus on you know training and our Kydex uh, and the products that we make um, and that sort of thing. However, um, a lot of you all have been asking about doing a side-by-side -side comparison between the Feral Bison Belt and the GBRS Assaulter Belt uh, that I've been running for a few weeks. Um, so we decided, hey, why not? We'll start to work in a few reviews, uh, keep everyone happy, share some good knowledge, and uh, talk a little bit about some kit. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with my Feral Bison Belt. I'll talk about the GBRS Assaulter Belt in a second. What can I say? Feral makes really, really high quality stuff. Uh, I've been running the Ferro Bison belt as my main belt setup for pistol and rifle and everything in between um, for quite some time now. Um, if you've been following along with the page at all, you know that we really like Ferro's quality of their kit. Uh, we run a lot of the products, slings, plate carriers, belts obviously, um, and everything in between. So um, first and foremost too, these are belts that I bought. These are not things that um, we know we're paid to say. Um, this isn't a biased review. You know, Faro, GBRS, uh, none of those guys are, you know, giving us anything to say, uh, you know, what we want to say about these belts. So just to get that point across there. Um, the Bison belt, amazing belt. Uh, I really like the lightweight construction of it. Uh, the one thing that is a little bit a shame about this is it's you know a two inch belt but it's a little bit proud um, with this webbing attached to the the laser cut uh, thermoplastic construction so depending on what you're trying to put on um, using tech locks can be a little bit tight so molly lock works a little bit better there's no problem at all with my uh, you know two inch uh, safari land ubl just have to sort of pinch the belt and squeeze it on uh, for a nice fit once it's on there it moves around nicely um, you know, same thing for, for this stuff, um, using straps like this or the, you know, the wrap over like this or slide on Cordura, it's no problem at all, but tech locks, it is a little bit problematic. So just keep that in mind. Um, sits a little bit too tight, but, uh, overall the construction of the belt is great. Um, and I think it's safe to say that, you know, obviously we're doing a side by side comparison of these two belts, but it does not matter at all like either one of these belts is a great performing belt and you'll be happy with with either um but for the sake of the video and comparison we're gonna run through my likes and dislikes about each belt so again yeah just to recap a little bit proud on that two inches makes things like tech locks a little bit hard to get on there um it's kind of too tight to use so molly lock and other types of strap systems work better um, one thing I really like about the, the Bison belt is the quick adjustability um, and the, the size of the inner belt. Uh, this is a two-part you know piece two part belt system like many of the newer belts out on the market these days. It works really well. Um, and this comes on and off and slips through standard pant uh, loops super easily. I've used some other inner belts that are a little bit tight and they're hard to get on and off. Um, and I'm not a big fan of having to change a million um, inner belts in and out. So we'll kind of get to that point about what I like about the GBRS belt in a minute. Um, some people think that the inner belt on this is a little bit flimsy. It's not the strongest. Uh, some people choose to um, swap it out with another type of inner belt. I haven't found any trouble with it yet. It's fine. Um, but the, uh, the one thing again like I do like is that quick adjustability of this um, Cordura strap. And then it has quite a robust uh, Cobra buckle here with, uh, I believe, a 3,000 pound uh, weight limit on the belt itself. So that's pretty cool uh, if you need to do any rescue operations or anything. Um, my one qualm with the quick adjust system is that sometimes through heavy use, it does have a tendency to slip a little bit. And it's not too big of a deal. Again, you can quickly pull this in and, and tighten down this strap and it, and it holds pretty well. Um, but it does slip once in a while during heavy use. Um, again, just to recap, amazing product, great belt, and uh, you definitely won't be upset if you end up with a Ferro Bison belt. So let me chuck this down and pull up this Assaulter belt. I've been running this belt now for a few weeks, about, about a month, uh, pretty heavily. And uh, 
you know, running all of our Kydex goodies on it. And uh, I've been using it mainly for a pistol training belt. Um, there's no rifle mag setup yet on it, but um, so far it's been performing really well. It has very much uh, similar construction to the Ferro uh, belt with um, slick multicam pattern. And then of course it has this laser cut uh, thermoplastic construction to keep everything rigid and strong. It too is a two uh, piece belt system. Just untangle this here. So one thing you'll notice too about the, this belt is that the hook and loop is reversed. And I think the idea behind that is that uh, over time it can you know, rub into your sides of your body and it's less comfortable if the pokey end and not the soft end of the hook and loop is, is jabbing you in the side. So um, it's totally reversed of most belts out there, but it's um, so far it's been cool and um, it, it does definitely help. So one of the things that I really like about this belt is it is a true two inches um, in width, which allows all of these tech locks to easily connect and uh, slide around and you can easily move your kit around. So in this case, I'm running a tourniquet holder and two, um, two canted uh, mag holders with tech lock and wherever I wanna move them to, I can quickly adjust. Um, at the end, it is folded back on itself and stitched um, just to piece it all together and, and strengthen it up. And at the very end, it is a little bit uh, thicker. So the tech locks have a bit of an issue sometimes. So sometimes it's good to run like a molly lock uh, through this at the very end. If you like to run your mag carriers or whatever, right at the end, um, you may have to take that into account. Um, but otherwise, everything moves on really smoothly and you just do it, have to do kind of a bend on the GBRS logo here. And that's kind of where your Safari Land UBL or, or what have you slides right on and locks into place. So that's really cool. Um, adjusting this belt is a little bit harder than the um, Bison belt because they don't have a quick adjust. Everything is through this Cobra buckle here. And um, it's uh, super robust stitching and really good quality material. And once you fine tune it and get it to where you want it, it does not slip. So I do like that, but it does take a little bit of, of you know, fine tuning to find exactly what works for you. Um, I'm like a 34, 35 waist, and this one is a small medium, and I think my bison belt is a medium. So belt um, sizing can be a little bit strange, but uh, it does, you know, it does the job and uh, fits really well. There's a bit of a range in there on each belt, and it fits me really well. This one has like an extra large, robust uh, cobra clip, and I believe it's also weight rated like the Faro bison belt, so you can use it for, you know, rescue operations or whatever. Um, so that's cool. Again, both belts, super good construction, and I don't think you can go wrong with either belt. You'll be stoked to have either one, and both performs great. I run both side by side. I don't have a favorite now. Uh, each one has little things that I like about the other uh, more, um, but that's just kind of how kit goes. I love both belts, almost equally the same. One thing I want to point out real quick about the GBRS Assaulter belt, which I think is super cool, is if you're lazy like me, you don't want to continuously change out your inner belt on a two belt um, piece system. A lot of guys like to run it and uh, leave that inner belt in and you know everyday carry with it to and from the range. And a lot of these two piece belts, the inner belt is quite flimsy. Um, not that it doesn't work well with holsters and you know clips still clip into it and still holds the weight and you can still draw fine. Um, but if you're looking for a little bit more of a rigid belt, GBRS Group has a outer sheath that goes on top of the inner belt, which you can leave that inner belt in all the time and slide this on like this. And it makes it a bit more rigid, covers that hook and loop, and then creates a almost like a second belt for the price of one. Um, so you get your, your battle belt set up and you also get with that same inner belt, you get a um, everyday carry belt as well. I've everyday carried with this um, a bit. I think it works pretty well. It's a really cool system, and that was one of the things that I was most excited for when they announced that they were going to release this uh, this belt. So all in all, both really cool belts. Hope these little side by side reviews helped a little bit. Um, you can't go wrong with either. Whichever one's in stock. Get both if you can, try them out. 
both awesome belts. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.